Welcome to State of Events, where we keep you up to date on the latest Bay Area news. I'm Valerie Van Ryn. And I'm Kaylee Hendricks. On November 15th, San Francisco will be converted into Gotham City as part of a Make-A-Wish Foundation event. Miles, a five-year-old boy from Tule Lake, wants to be Batman, and the city of San Francisco will help make his wish come true. This upcoming Friday, Miles will be called on by the San Francisco Police Chief to help save the day in a series of crime-solving adventures. He will capture the Riddler and meet SF Mayor Ed Lee, who will present him with a key to the city. Over 1,200 volunteers have signed up to attend the different events for Miles, as well as help his dream to become a real-life superhero come true. An El Cerrito High School student was struck and killed by a BART train this morning. The incident occurred at the El Cerrito del Norte BART station around 5 in the morning. The person has been identified as 16-year-old Faso Delgado. Police have not released the circumstances of the death at this time. The Golden State is the first to approve a law on respecting the rights of transgender K-12 students. Governor Jerry Brown signed law AB 1266 in September, which provides transgender students privacy rights. The goals of AB 1266 are to reduce discrimination against transgender students. A coalition of conservative groups called Privacy for All Students submitted 620,000 signatures to add on to the November 2014 ballot to repeal this law. Supporters of the repeal effort argue that the law violates the privacy rights of non-transgender students. Director of Equality California John O'Connor states that protecting this law is a number one priority. In other news, an East Bay High School student has suffered third-degree burns. Rocky Mathers has all the details. Teachers, students, friends, and strangers are still looking for ways to show their support for an East Bay High School student who suffered second and third degree burns after his skirt was set on fire during an AC Transit bus ride. More than $500 has been, more than $500 has been raised for the victim's family, and that money was matched by the Oakland Education Association. According to President Trish Gorman, the idea to raise the donations came from Oakland High teacher Jesse Muldoon, who oversees the GSA club at, o at Oakland High. The two groups are waiting for a heads up from the Fletchman's family to decide when to deliver the $1,000. If you'd like to help, visit phonely.com forward slash helping Sasha a speedy recovery. On to other Oakland news. In order for teens to stay away from violence and to, be, and to avoid being the victims of crime, an Oakland councilman is taking the initiative to help safety. Noel Gallo is going forward on a proposal he first brought up in September, where it puts a curfew on anyone under the age of 18. This possible curfew calls for fines, community service, and even jail time for any accompanied child or teen found outside in a public, in a public area or even inside businesses between 10 a.m. and 5 a.m., unless accompanied by an adult. The proposal classifies anyone over 21 as an adult and can only have a child within said hours if they are traveling to or from work, are finishing an errand, or are doing religious or city-sponsored activities. Parents, however, could also be penalized if their child is found in the streets during curfew. Gallo says he isn't wanting to lock everyone up, as most people may think. Instead, he wants to keep children off the streets, saying, we are all feeling sorry about the crime, crying over it, praying about it, but we're not taking the proactive measure to keep our kids home. For State of Events, I'm Rocky Mathers. Back to the studio. Thanks, Rocky. A facility that will turn food scraps into gas that can then be converted into electricity is set to open in San Jose. The plant, a partnership between two companies, Green Waste and Zanker Road Resource Management, is scheduled to open later this month. It will turn food waste from across the city into compost and methane biogas. The biogas can then be converted into electricity. Experts say the police will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and capture a significant source of energy. When fully up and running, the plant will be among the largest of its kind in the world. 
If you drive in San Francisco, we have a few stories you will want to see. That and more up next. sale at bookstores and newsstands near you. Experience Theatre Bay Area Magazine. At first I was a bit hesitant to try it. To tell you the truth, I didn't think I'd fit in. But I kept pushing her and she ended up loving it. I was surprised. It was an amazing experience. And now we do it at least twice a month. I've even gotten most of my friends to do it. If you do it enough, you can get a great deal on the price. Why didn't we think of this before? It's a stimulating experience. The Z Space Studio, word for word. Z Space Studio, word for word, stimulation guaranteed. See you at the theater. When it comes to parking in San Francisco, many things come to mind. Parking meters, parking tickets, and public garages. San Francisco State is a whole nine miles away from the city and the students, too, are faced with this similar predicament. Kristen King shares more on this parallel. Here at San Francisco State, students compete for parking. These parking locations border the campus and neighboring communities. Some of these locations include Holloway Avenue, Font Boulevard, and Park Merced. Catalia, a student of SF State, shares her experience. I barely park on the one-hour ones, but the four-hour ones is always available and I don't find it hard. But sometimes there is a cleaning, that's the problem. I always have to kind of pay attention and I saw a bunch of people got a ticket too. Okay, have you ever gotten a ticket? Um, I did actually once in sophomore year. I parked in the one-hour ones and that's, that's it. I'm like steady from there. Parking tickets in the San Francisco state vicinity could cost $62 to $72. Despite the hefty ticket prices, students continue parking on the street sides. These students interviewed have paid more than five tickets. Here are their stories. Um, I think, I think, I'm just about to pay my eighth. I've had plenty of tickets here. <laughs> like six or seven. The city of San Francisco collects over $40 million in roadside meters and parking tickets. A transport authority officer located at San Francisco State University explained that he issues 15 to 40 tickets per day. SFSU students are no exemption to these parking revenues. I could sum it up in one word, extortion. It is absolutely a racket. They wait until the first week and then the finals and midterm time to, to overly enforce any parking rules or all applicable laws. I think it's disgusting that the, the administration as a practice allows this to take place on a campus, especially on a, an institution so progressive, at least namesakely so like SFSU. The journey of it all is a parking lot is provided to students. Despite its accessibility, they refuse to park in the lot, as students believe it is too costly to park per day. It appears the city will not be cracking down on parking tickets anytime soon, and SF State students continue to park on sidewalks. That was Kristen King reporting for State of Events. Hefty fees are hardly considered a good thing, and the residents of Westlake Village Apartments in Daly City are angry. The apartments have undergone several renovations within the past year, and according to residents, they make parking near their homes a hassle. Many parking areas have become unavailable to park at for certain time periods. Consequences for parking at these areas have been as extreme as towing, leaving many residents carless for hours at a time as well as with a hole in their pockets. Most recently, a thorough complex cleaning resulted in the towing of multiple cars through Blue Water Towing of Daly City. Including the cost of property release papers from the police department, residents paid up to $650 to get their cars back. Although signs were posted to notify residents that their vehicles could be towed, many residents still feel that the impound fees make this outcome an unfair one. 
Even though the U.S. had a federal government shutdown, American employers exceeded economist predictions. There was an increase of 204 thousand workers compared to economist predictions of 163,000. U.S. economist of Society General in New York, Brian Jones, shares that U.S. labor is actually healthy, despite what most people may think. The world's largest online retailer, Amazon, has created more than 70,000 full-time seasonal positions in hopes to convert thousands of those positions into permanent roles after the holidays as it did back in 2012. Fed policymakers need more evidence that the economy will continue to improve before they cut down $85 billion in monthly treasury and mortgage debt. A new skyscraper now holds the title of the nation's tallest building. A panel of architects named the New World Trade Center the highest standing building in the U.S. The One World Trade Center in New York City stole this title from Chicago's Willis Tower. The panel allowed the needle on top of the skyscraper to be counted towards its height of 1,776 feet. The New York Tower was built as a monument to those killed on 9-11. A record number of international students are attending American universities. The number of foreign students rose 7% from last year. Some point to aggressive recruiting by colleges for the increase. International students bring an estimated $24 billion into the U.S. economy. A new study shows that the recent slowdown in global warming is due to international crackdowns on greenhouse gases. According to the EPA, the CFC emissions are down 90%. The EPA calls this a blessing for the ozone layer and our climate. Efforts to reduce greenhouse emissions and help from the Obama administration to impose limitations from power plants are expected to slow down global warming. Kristen King with more on international news. The estimated death toll of 10,000 is expected to rise quickly in the Philippines as rescue workers try to reach villages and towns that were caught off by the typhoon. Aid trucks struggled to leave the airports as streams of people clogged the roadways with trucks and motorcycles. The United States is sending an aircraft carrier, the George USS George Washington, to assist in the challenging areas where roadways and bridges are impossible. The carrier is said to be already in the region, having been in a port visit to Hong Kong. The United States Navy launched a new aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford. The launch was held in Newport News, Virginia. The $13 billion warship and air carrier is said to be the most deadly. The carrier is capable of launching 220 airstrikes a day. The ship is the first in the Navy's newest generation of air carriers. The ship holds 4,000 sailors and marines and is designed to be virtually invisible to the enemy radar. The exterior of the ship is 100% complete, but the internal connections and features are still being added. The carrier should be up and running in February 2019. China steps up security based on allegations made against the U.S. National Security Agency, the NSA, is said to have collected data from millions of calls made in Europe. Spokeswoman for China's foreign ministry explains their concern. Like many other countries, they are paying close attention to the revelations of eavesdropping and surveillance. The head of the NSA defends the beleaguered organization, explaining that the acts within the law to stop militant attacks. The NSA decides any allegations of collecting data from millions of telephone calls in Europe. Back to you, Jesse, with sports. Perfection in the NBA and a headache for the 49ers. These stories and more coming up next in sports. Before City Car Share, we were spending a lot of money on gas and insurance. I felt like I had to check my bank account every time I went driving. City Car Share is great because the membership includes insurance and a gas card. I don't even know why we owned a car in the Bay Area. Now we just have more money to spend on other things. City Car Share is an important part of our lives. City Car Share gives you the benefits of using a car. Without the hassle of owning one.
Common daily routines can make important changes. Changes like higher wages, better living, and justice. Sometimes it's just a matter of making the right choice. Fair Trade certified coffees are bought directly from family farmers, guaranteeing them better incomes and strengthening their communities. Fair Trade certified. Taste fairness. Look for the label wherever you buy coffee. As Thanksgiving and the holiday season approaches, collegiate summer sports come to a conclusion. This is the case for SF State's men's soccer team who battled through a grim season. The 2013 San Francisco State University men's soccer season has come and gone. The Gators finished the year with 11 straight losses, notching a record of 3-14-1 overall and 0-10 in conference play. But with only two seniors on their entire roster, the team credits their youth and inexperience for the rough year. With uh, you know, over half our team brand new to not only the university, but to the level and the, uh, the quality of play, we knew that there were going to be some growing pains. I think it's just the maturity of the players um, and being able to, to transfer from club soccer and high school soccer into more collegiate soccer. In addition to their lack of seasoned leadership, the team couldn't find a way to stay consistent throughout the year. We've had 19 different starters in 16 games, and we've had 16 different lineups due to either injuries, uh, card situations. You know, so there's just been a lot of jumbling. There. You know, the continuity factor hasn't been what we wanted. Although the purple and gold endured a dreadful season, they managed to come up big when it mattered most. And the highlight of the Gators' season came on just one goal which was enough to knock off Cal State LA, ranked number seven in all of Division II. Building off that marquee victory, plus returning 10 of their 11 starters for next year, makes it easy to say that the best is on the horizon. It's really gonna be something that we're gonna find in the spring when we can get together over a three month period and have these kids grow and mature. Next year, there's a lot of room to grow and um, we have the talent potentials here on the team. It's just putting it all together. That persistent process of progress starts in February of 2014 when off-season workouts begin. The Gator men hope to build off that down year and come back strong next season. The NBA's last unbeaten team remained perfect last night. The Indiana Pacers dismantled the Memphis Grizzlies 95-79 on Monday night to improve to 8-0 on the year. Lance Stevenson led the way for Indiana with his first career triple-double, notching 13 points, 11 rebounds, and 12 assists. This early season unbeaten record has the Indiana Pacers at the top of the Eastern Conference and ranked number one in the NBA Power Rankings. Their next test comes November 15th against the Milwaukee Bucks. The San Francisco 49ers might have lost more than just the game this Sunday versus Carolina Panthers. All-Pro tight end Vernon Davis left the matchup in the second quarter with a concussion and did not return for the rest of the game. The injury occurred on a hit from Panther safety Mike Mitchell on an incomplete pass. On the other side of the ball, the Red and Gold's rookie safety Eric Reed exited the game with a concussion as well. Reed came up to make a big hit on a big boy in Mike Tolbert and it didn't work out in his favor. The status for both players is still uncertain moving forward. The National Football League no longer has a winless team. The last two teams to earn a W in the league did so this weekend. The Jacksonville Jaguars fought off a late rally from the Tennessee Titans and held on to win 29-27 this Sunday. Just last night on Monday Night Football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers topped the ailing Miami Dolphins 22-19. Both teams improved to a record of 1-8 overall in the year and both sit in last place in their respective divisions. Jesse, in addition to the injuries, what other changes are taking place within the 49ers team? The 49ers made some big news today. They cut wide receiver and return man Kyle Williams, which was a long-expected uh, decision they made. And Michael James will take over all return duties. And that is a wrap for the sporting sector. That's all for today's news. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on State of Events. Good night.